G'day, it's Matt from Terra Media, and today we are going to be adding a new property uh, using easy property listings in WordPress. So first off, head to your login screen and log in. Once you're logged in, have a look down the sidebar here in the admin menu and find property. You'll also see rentals and commercial here, which work very similarly. If you hover over property, the menu will expand and you can browse all of your existing listings, add a new one, or manage the suburbs and features. So we're going to add new, so click on that, and that will take you to the add new listing screen. So first off, you want to enter your listing title. Uh, this is different to the heading that actually displays on the listing front page. So you could use the listing address, for example. Let's just just use the address as this test one. So we'll call it one test street, test suburb, uh, New South Wales. All right, so that's the name of our listing. Then we've got our body text here. So this is our basically our listing description. So you wanna use this space to really sell it, tell people about it, why it's so great. Uh, you can make this as long or as short as you want, but you obviously want it to be long enough to really convey the information you want potential buyers to see about your property. If you scroll down, you'll see the listing details section and the heading. Next up, listing agent or agents. So office ID is really just uh, internal referencing your office. If you only have one office, you don't need to use this. Um, if you have multiple offices in different locations, then you may wish to use this just to differentiate listings between the office that's actually managing them. Then you've got your listing agent. So this is your managing agent that's actually handling the sale. You can leave this blank if you want to, and, and you may wish to if you're the only agent at your uh, real estate agency. But if you've got multiples and you want to display them with the listings, then you would set it here. And just start typing it in, and it will suggest the, the uh, agents that are registered on here for you, and you can then select one. Same thing goes for second listing agent if you have one. Uh, the hide author box will basically hide those things anyway if you don't want to show them. Then we've got listing type. So this is filling out more information about the property that's for sale. So we want to know the property status. Is it currently listed? Has it been withdrawn from the market? Is it off market or has it been sold? So generally when you list it for the first time, it'll probably be current. Uh, you might also want to list the date that it was listed so people know how long it's been on the market. You can select today's date or one in the past, one in the future. The authority, so whether it's exclusive, whether it's going to auction, uh, open, sale, etc. Um, you just pick the one that's the most appropriate for this particular property. The house category, so there's a whole heap of different ones to choose from here. And uh, this one is a house. So we're going to go with that. Now unique ID is really just if you have an internal one for reference. So you can probably leave this if you don't have one. Otherwise stick it in if you find it helpful. Uh, you can skip the XML import and mod date if you don't know what it is. You don't need it. Next up display details. So if you want to feature the listing on your website tick the featured box and that'll make it featured. So if there's any locations that are set to show properties that have been featured or to add emphasis to featured properties, then this will turn that on. Do you have any inspections lined up yet? If so, you can set the dates and times here. So I might have this property open for inspection tomorrow from, let's say, 9... 50 a.m. to 10 a.m. So I'll add that and I can add as many inspection times as I like. And you can of course always come back and add these later as, as you schedule new ones. Continuing down in the main section here is listing features. How many bedrooms does it have? Well, it's a four bedroom house. How many bathrooms? Two. Other rooms that are, that are of note? Uh, let's say it's got one. Does it have any en suites? No. You can leave these blank, of course, if, if it doesn't have one. Uh, 
Does it have a garage? Yes, it has two garage spaces and one carport space. Are there any open spaces? These are all numeric through here. Uh, and these are actually used and displayed with icons on the front end, uh, just to make it more recognizable for your visitors. Do you have the year built? Do you know when it was? Let's say this was 1989. And then there's a few other options like, is it a new construction? This one's not. Does it have a pool? No. Does it have air conditioning? Yes. Does it have a security system? No. So just tick or leave blank depending on what the property has. If you have the land details, you can also fill them in here. So land area, uh, the unit of measurement that you're using, the building area, and again, the unit of measurement that you're using for the building area. They can be different from the land unit area. And if the, the house or property that you are listing has an energy rating, you can tick that here. And you can also tick if it is fully fenced. Continuing down, we've got additional features. So these are separated into internal, external, and heating and cooling features. So just go through and tick any that apply. Uh, you can see there's a whole heap to choose from. Continuing down, you can specify a video URL if you have one. Uh, I would pull this from YouTube or Vimeo if possible, as they integrate the best, uh, and basically just upload it to that platform and then copy and paste the URL into this box here and it will add that. You can also add a floor plan, a second floor plan and external links if there's any other sites that you want to send people to for some reason as well as the energy certificate if the property has one. To add a floor plan we'll go add file. Now if we want to upload a new one we can click select files and that will let us browse the computer for it. Or if we want to use one that we've already uploaded, click on Media Library. And that will load all of the media that's currently in the library. So we'll grab this floor plan that we've already uploaded. And then, of course, we have the images of the property itself. So this is down in this section under Slider Images. And we're using the Slider extension here. So that is an add-on that's available for easy property listings. So click Upload Images, and again, you can upload them uh, over here using the Upload Files tab, or you can use ones that are already on the property. Now, keep in mind, these do have to be ones that are associated with this particular property, or it won't let you use them. So if we go Upload Files and select Files, it will let us browse the computer, and we can jump into Yeah, and we will add some property photos. Now, it'll upload those and it may take a moment or two. Once it's done, you can then insert them into the post using this button down here. Now, while we're just on this screen, it is worthwhile having a look at some of the other fields. They are useful for your search engine optimization. So each image will have a title, caption, alt text and a description box. Now you don't need to use all of these for the slider display, but it's worth having a title and the alt text. Now the alt text in particular is what search engines and screen readers look at. You don't need to worry about the display settings here either. You can just insert into post now that they're all uploaded and you'll see that we've got all of our images here. If you wanted to disable one of them uh, after you've added it, you can just click the little button and that'll turn it off without actually removing it. So it won't show on the front end anymore, but it is still attached to your property. If you want to reorder them, just click and drag them to change the order around. So now we're done with our main settings. We'll just jump back up to the top here and you'll see down the right hand side, we have a few other configuration options to choose from. The publishing settings up the top are what you're going to use when you're ready to put this live or if you just want to save a draft. At this point, we've done a fair bit of work, so we'll click the Save Draft button just to make sure that it's all saved and we're not going to lose anything if the browser crashes or something like that. If we continue on down this right-hand sidebar, we want to put in our suburb. So, we've said it's in our in test suburb. 
So we would type test suburb. Now I haven't added one of these before, so it's not suggesting it to me. I can click add though, and it will create the suburb for me. Let's say I was putting it in a suburb that I've already got. I can just start typing and it will suggest any suburbs that match. You can put it in multiple suburbs if you want to. Next is the features box. Now this is used if you have any custom features that are unique to the property that have not been listed over here in the listing features or these additional features. I would generally avoid using these ones and just try and stick to the, the preset ones because that, that'll keep it all nice and consistent. But if there is anything that you really need to add, just type it in here and click add and it will create it for you. I guess we could say river frontage perhaps for this listing as a feature. Again, it'll have a look at any other features that you've used in the past and suggest them to you if they're uh, matching what you've typed. And that way you can try and maintain consistency with those extra features as well. Continuing down is our street address. Now it's important to put this in accurately and as fully as possible. If the listing is not actually uh, going to show the address, then you can turn it off or you can leave out the fields, but obviously the more accurate it is, the more accurate it will show up in the front end. It won't find our address because it's a fake one, but let's say we went with something like 1 George Street, Sydney, New South Wales. It'll find that but we'll put the country in too, just on the safe side, and that's gonna be 2000 for the postcode there. If it's a unit, you can put that in here. If you want this address to be visible on the front end, then you'll just tick the display street address box at the top here. If you don't want to show a map on your listings, then you would tick the hide map box. Uh, you can also obviously leave the display street address unticked to, to not show it. Coming on down, you've got pricing. You've got a few options here. So the search price is what you use uh, for comparisons and that sort of thing on the actual listing pages if they choose the browse by price option. So you'll put something in here, let's say it is 300,000 and that has to just be numeric. Then the price text is what we're actually showing to, to visitors for the price here. So we might put it in a little bit more pretty with a comma. The auction date, if it has an auction, gets set here. This one's not going for auction, so we'll leave it. Then we choose, do we want to display the price or not? We can tick that if we do. If we don't, leave it unticked. This is particularly useful, for example, if you want to show the property in comparisons as, as being within a price range, but you don't want to show what price they're actually asking for it. If the property is under offer, then you can tick that box there. Or if it's a house and land package, you can tick that one as well. If the property has already sold, then over here in sale details, just enter the, the price it sold for. So let's say we had a bidding war on our property and we jumped up to 350,000. Sorry, that can't have any commas, that's just a number. And then we could also set the sale date. If we want to display the sale price, then you can just tick that box there as well. and That'll show it in all of the places that have been configured on your website to show it. Now on your properties, there is also a contact. So again, you would, could put that in here. We don't have any contacts set up though. Last but not least on this page is the featured image. Now we've got all of our images down here, but our featured image is what is used on the listing directory. So on your properties page or, or your sold page, or anywhere else that's just showing a list of properties, this is the image that'll show up. We'll pick a kitchen image and click set featured image. That'll add it in here so we can see it. If we made a mistake, we can click it again and that'll bring the window back up in the media library. We can remove it by clicking remove featured image. We're all done now. We're ready to publish our listing. So if we just scroll up to the top here, we can click publish. Now that's going to go ahead and publish. So it'll be live and it will now show up on all of the, the listing categories and anywhere else that's been configured to show new listings. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any trouble with your easy property listings and need help, just get in touch with Terra Media. Check out the details in the video description below.